All right, what do you say we finish up this little mini guitar build today? Well, both of them. In part one of this video series, uh, I talked about how and why we designed this little mini 12 string nylon string guitar. In part two, we built the bodies. And in part three, we uh, made the neck and the fingerboard and all that stuff. And so now we're going to finish and put the instrument together. Uh, after getting the body done, I did have to do some work to it still. Most notably, I had to add the electronics cavity, um, which I have not found a way to automate this yet <laughs> on the CNC. And still, you know, use some hand tools to do that. And I always start small and work my way in better than making the whole too big. And then I screwed in my threaded inserts and my little penny into the neck for the whole uh, angled bolt-on neck adjustment thing that I do like on all my acoustic instruments. Uh, but most importantly, I had to you know put that neck on and then locate and install my bridge. So here you can see I'm using a number of tools and a laser and everything in my uh, in my hands and you know my center square comes in very handy for that as well as the original square to figure out exactly where I want my bridge because if I put it in the wrong spot it's gonna sound bad and be out of tune so definitely this is like a measure six times cut once kind of job and on this instrument I finished it first then taped the whole top off and then glued the bridge on and finished uh, the bridge was finished prior as well uh, which we'll talk more about that bridge in a minute but so I had to take some of the finish off in that spot uh, so the glue would work and uh, just trying something new this time. Usually I would put the bridge on first and then finish it all together, but sometimes you get these little goopy spots in the cracks where the finish pools and collects, and I want to see if I could do something a little bit cleaner. Um, like I said, we'll talk about that bridge in a minute. Then I started adding some strings after I put these tuners on and began to notice a problem with the bridge. Um, pretty big one. So this is one of the reasons why when I make these instruments that I've never made before, that I tend to make two of them. One that is kind of for me or, you know, I'll sell eventually if it's, if it's good enough, um, to try out some steps uh, in the process of making it. So, you know, this instrument is going to be a nylon string. Um, this is the, the, the one that I'm making that's not for the client. Um, and uh, I'm starting to string it up and I realize that my, my bridge design uh, was not going to be strong enough. It actually started to come up there and there's more flex in this wood than I thought. I didn't think that there would be that much tension from the nylon strings, but there was. Um, so this one I'm going to glue down and repair. Maybe I'm going to add a little extra um, support in the middle of it. Um, but what I've done now for the clients is I've gone and I've made a new bridge piece that will go across. I just took it off the laser. So that'll give me uh, more contact points here and it won't be like that arch they'll be pulling up underneath the strings so I think this is going to work better once I clean it up and um and I'm glad that this one failed on me so early before I started gluing together the client's instrument you know so I think worst case scenario I can I could pull this top piece off and I cut a I cut a spare one of these which I might I might even just go and do um but you know We'll figure something out. Uh, the problem is, is that it might not look as attractive as I wanted to for the client. So I figure it out here and then do it for real. I ended up just drilling through this a couple times and adding some dowels with a whole bunch of glue. And then of course I had to make that all look good again. Since this instrument has this a little bit more of a rustic look to it, I just made the bridge sort of match that. I added some finish to it and now uh, it's time to start stringing it up. And uh, I, I got a little crazy with the stringing. <laughs> about the practice instrument for a minute so the clients build has 12 strings six doubled up strings and I was gonna just make this as a six string version of that instrument and just string it like a normal six string guitar but then I thought I could add these two additional tuners on the headstock and that way I could just set it up like a six string and just not even use those two tuners or I could add a couple strings and mess around with which strings I added. So I started by adding uh, metal strings against the nylon in the middle in the D and G position. And it's kind of fun because like especially the G where they're the same note, they bend at a very different rate. Right, it's kind of cool. 
<laughs> and um, so that was kind of fun, and I was just kind of messing around with that. But now there's other ways we could tune this too. Like I said, you could ignore the two tuners and just do it as a six string. We could potentially set this up as eight individual strings and do a regular guitar tuning with a low B and a high A, which I thought might be kind of fun because the nut should be wide enough here to do it, and we could do it low tension. Um, we could also do like um, I was thinking like a ukulele tuning, but set up like a mandolin with the double strings, and we'd have a pretty wide nut down here for that. But um, it would still be kind of fun. Or we could do just like a mandolin tuning for guys like me whose hands are too big to play a mandolin. Next, I took the two metal strings off, added two more nylon strings, and made a new nut so I could string it like an eight string. So now what I'll do is I'll push these external strings out as close to the edge as I feel comfortable putting them, just a little. And now I can just measure between these two and space out six additional strings. Okay, so now I have it strung up like a regular guitar, but with an extra low B and an extra high A. So it's an eight string guitar. And um, like check this out, you got, a, you got four octaves. <laughs> right in one position. Um, but man, this breaks my brain. I'm, I can't figure out how to play this thing to save my life. <laughs> But in the right hand, something like this might be, you know, a pretty cool instrument for like, you know, guys that know how to play guitar. But me, I'm a bass player. I'm, I like four strings. So now I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna string it up like a double string ukulele, I think. I don't know, let's see what happens. And that's what I did. I settled on uh, metal strings, like a eight string uke tuned D, G, B, E, but I'm not gonna show you that till the end. First, I gotta get this 12 string together now for the client. So we got the tuning pegs on, bolted the neck on, and uh, started to string that up with the new bridge. But first I had to do all that layout work again. This is a good time for a word from our sponsor, which is of course, me. As you probably know by now, I don't take corporate money to make this channel possible. I make this channel possible thanks to viewers like you who support me on Patreon and also who shop at some of my stores, including squaretools.com, which is where I sell the tools that I've made over the years and designed uh, right here in this workshop. And this is the very first one I ever did. It's called the Square, and it's what started the whole business. And the idea was I wanted something that had a ruler on two sides, and it's got a million other features built into it. We're just going to talk about some of the ones that I use the most today. Um, so you'll notice I have, we have this nice 90-degree angle, this nice 45-degree angle, so those come in handy for all sorts of reasons but we also have this slightly rounded corner here to just give you a quick reference if you need to radius in something by hand you know sanding or whatever you can see those lines there now we also have um, measurements just built into it like you can see this is one inch from both edges and then here's another one inch mark right there and uh, I can flip this over into this corner and now I have exactly one inch in all directions from all the corners that I can use for say putting, you know, screwing feet into the bottom of a cabinet or something or if I just need to find those distances uh, from the edges, you can see we have quick and easy reference there. Um, now I can say take my center square which is also a tool over at squaretools.com and say find the center of my board here. Uh, let me make that a little easier to see and then I will put my ice pick right into that X. Now you can see if we need to make bigger radiuses, I have this compass built in. So you can see we can make all sorts of other radiuses. There's all sorts of other angles built in. There's all sorts of quick references built in. It's just a very useful tool for some basic layout and design. And it is only available at squaretools.com. Back to the show. So you can see that I'm using my center square and my original square as well as just a regular ruler and my little tiny ruler there to do all my layout on the second instrument. Uh, went a little faster this time because I had a little little practice in this size and scale instrument. But um, yeah, that's why I made these tools because they really do uh, get used a lot in my workshop and I figured if you know, there's something that I was looking to use, someone else might be <laughs> looking to use it too. Um, and uh, now it's the you know, same procedure as last time to put this better, more improved bridge down onto the surface. And so besides the direct gluing, you see I have those holes there, and I put glue on dowels that will run through the body 
whereas on my traditional acoustic guitars I actually have a metal fastener there but on this one uh, I just put glue on dowels and that way it's going through and it's a different you know grain change of wood um, connecting the surfaces and, and and actually you know fitting into them instead of just being a flat butt joint glue Once the glue dried, I cut off the excess dowels and, you know, a little bit of uh, wood glue and some sawdust from just the sanding made those ends look a little bit better. Cleaned it all up and got some finish on that bridge. It was a little tricky getting some of that tape off, so I need to uh, improve on this system just a little bit. I made the saddle and the nut from some scraps of uh, hardwood and I used my square X to help me figure out, you know, rough in my, my bridge and the height I needed to be over the frets. And there's a piezo under there too, of course, so I could have my electronics. I had to get a little creative with uh, strings and you know we're stringing this is a 12 string and it's a shorter scale and so you tend to have to use like a thicker string on a shorter scale instrument. Um, so what I ended up doing was buying a six string set and then a bunch of individual nylon strings uh, to sort of change the scale and make the... Well nylon strings are a little more forgiving than the steel strings so I had a little more room to play um, but I wanted to make the low E a little bit thicker and then the high E a little bit thicker and then I had to sort of figure out which octave I was going to do where and you know if I wanted to try to make a you know a super high A's and sorry I couldn't figure out how to film this without my hand being in the way but you see I make a loop around the string and then I just make that same loop again and pull it tight and that's how you string a nylon string guitar you just gotta you know make sure it seats well um, and so I went and I added all 12 strings and started carving out the nut and it was a little bit tricky to get all that because you know it's a lot of strings and a little space and these strings are thicker than steel strings so they take up a little more room and the slots need to be a little wider, but then the slots also had to be really close together and I was using wood, so I was having like chip out where the wood would break. I ended up finding a piece of graphite that I used that was a little bit more stable. Uh, this is my first attempt at carving a nut. Um, but you know, eventually I did get it all in there and you know, we designed it to be wide enough. It was just a matter of, of uh, actually making that work practically in the real world with these sort of thick strings. Nylon strings stretch a lot, so it took a while to get this thing tuned, and several days, honestly, but uh, I ended up doing double octaves on the low E and A, just one octave on the D and G, and then unisons on the high B and E, and that seems to work pretty well. On the practice instrument, I found the sweet spot for the steel strings I put on it with uh, one of my $2 bill foil pickups, which is a surface mount magnetic pickup and wouldn't work on the nylon string. So I, I added that because it was a quick, easy way of electrifying uh, this kind of unique instrument. Um, and you can get those pickups individually for sale at newperspectivesmusic.com. Then, of course, I used the center square to find the center for my end pin jack, and that was all the wiring that was required for this instrument. I just hardwired it right to the jack. I used my WEP Tools uh, hot air soldering system, which is kind of cool. They're these little plastic tabs that have solder in the middle, and you stick the wires in each end and just melt it together with this little hot air blower. Um, made pretty quick work of it. I did the same thing for the 12 string, but I had the wire in this little preamp that has the, you know, the, the volume knob and stuff on it. Um, so there's just three wires, one for the battery. Now let's tune them up and hear them.
admit to having a little bit of uh, closed-mindedness and, and snobbery even in my work when I first started making guitars. And I know that might sound weird coming from me and my channel because when I first started making guitars I was doing it out of water skis and snow skis. But I was always sticking to like sort of traditional orientation of instruments of, you know, six string guitars and four string basses and all that stuff. And I wasn't really interested in like cigar box guitars or other instruments that I didn't see as necessarily fitting into the hierarchy of, you know, rock and roll music or popular music or whatever you want to call it. And um, the older I get and the more I make stuff, the less I'm interested in any of that. And uh, this is a great example of that. Um, this is an instrument. Is this a 12 string miniature guitar? Is it a, a some kind of weird, you know, um, mandolin, six string mandolin? You know, it doesn't matter. And then this one here is sort of set up to even be more versatile like right now it's tuned as an eight string tenor ukulele but but who cares about all those names and all those pronouns to use a trendy word they're just instruments that make music and uh, i love now that as my career has developed that i get the calls from people who want to experiment with music and who want to find their own voice and their own individuality in their instruments they play that they call me to do it because man i love doing it and um this build along with some other stuff that i've been doing lately has really inspired me to um sort of branch out into the world of uh less traditional instruments even more so than when i started so buckle up <laughs>